where is the underworld imagined to be? The Greek underworld was a mysterious place, almost as much to the Greeks themselves as to us today. Compared to modern religions, such as Christianity, Islam or Buddhism, the Greeks concerned themselves much less with the spiritual location of the soul after death. Most concepts of the underworld were found in secretive religious cults, such as the Eleusinian Mysteries, and in myths and literature. As most information about what happened within such cults are generally a mystery, the nature and location of the underworld in Greek imagination can only truly be seen within Greek literature. And even amongst the texts we have, there appears to be no definite idea of where or what the underworld truly was, except for some recurring themes and ideas. To understand the location of the underworld in the grand cosmic system, it is best to begin with the traditional texts that describe the creation of such a system, the Theogony by Hesiod. Within this text, Hesiod, amongst other things, talks about the nature of the Titan's prison, Tartarus and the underworld, and where it sits in the cosmic order. It is described as being deep below the earth. For nine nights and days a bronze anvil might fall from heaven, and on the tenth reach earth. And for nine nights and days a bronze anvil might fall from the earth, and on the tenth reach Tartarus. This presents the underworld as being like a cosmic reflection of the heaven in which the gods inhabit, thus being equally distant and far away as the divine powers that govern the universe. It is also said how, above it grows the roots of the earth and the undraining sea. This presents the underworld as being deep within the earth, below even the very roots of the world, and being beyond the seemingly endless sea, introducing a motif of being separated by water, which we will see in other texts. Additionally, the underworld is described as a vast chasm, which not only reinforces its nature of being deep within the earth, but also calls back to the creation of the universe, which all of reality came forth from a cosmic chasm. This suggests the idea of all things returning from whence they came. The underworld is a cosmic pit which life will return back to. Therefore, through Hesiod, we can see the underworld as being of its name, a world below us that is as dark as the chaos before the universe and as distant as the gods themselves. Another text that established early on the idea of where the underworld was in the Greek imagination is the Odyssey by Homer. In order to meet the ghost of the prophet Tiresias, Odysseus is sent by the witch Circe to travel west, beyond Oceanus to a place where the pyrophlegophon and Cocytus, which is an offflow from the water of the Styx, flow into the Acheron. Again we get the imagery of travelling past water, with Odysseus having to go beyond the great Oceanus that surrounds the edge of the world. By travelling past this boundary, Odysseus enters a liminal space that is not entirely of this world, where he can access the waters of the underworld. What's peculiar about this description, however, is the notion of Odysseus merely travelling west in order to reach the dead. In this depiction, the underworld is somehow on a level with the rest of the world, just far away beyond its edge. However, within the Nekia, where Odysseus performs a rite to commune with the dead, there are some elements of the earth still present, as in order to talk to the ghost he must sacrifice downwards. This suggests that perhaps he is only partially within the underworld, the sacrifice is suggesting it is still below within the earth, thus reinforcing the idea that he is in fact in a place between. This is perhaps in reference to the setting sun, with the western horizon being a place where the sun, a source of light and life, descends below into the darkness of the earth, thus making it almost like a gateway. We can therefore understand the Homeric underworld as being a dark, phonic place at the edge of the world. Another Homeric text that reinforces that idea is the Homeric hymn to Demeter. Within the text, Persephone is kidnapped into marriage by Hades and pulled into the earth. The myth is used to explain the reason behind seasons, with winter coming when Persephone goes into the underworld, and spring coming with Persephone coming back out. The idea of life rising back up, of flowers rising from the ground as Persephone does, firmly demonstrates the underworld as being deep within the earth, acting as like an enclosed prison for the goddess, thus mirroring ideas within Hesiod's Theogony of the vast chasm and also of it being a prison for the Titans. However, there is also an element of a connection to the real world, as Persephone is able to still see the sun which grants her hope of returning home. This means that the underworld, albeit being deep below within the earth, is imagined to not be entirely closed in, thus being more like a deep dark pit instead of an enclosed cave or underground tomb. Despite both works being by Homer, however, there is no reference to the underworld being in the west, with Persephone being taken by Hades despite her not sailing beyond Oceanus thus suggesting that the idea was most likely unique to the Odyssey. Outside of more traditionally sophisticated pieces of work, comedy also provides an insight into the Greek understanding of the underworld. This is seen in Aristophanes' Frogs, in which Dionysus seeks the helps of Heracles to enter the underworld alive, so that he may retrieve a soul back to the world of the living. Within this play, Dionysus does not descend into the earth to enter the underworld, but travels across a lake with the help of the ferryman Charon. 
Such as with the Odyssey, once again the underworld is depicted as being on the same level as the rest of the world, just across a liminal body of water that acts as a neutral threshold. This liminality is emphasised by the frogs that make up the chorus and occupy the lake, as, since they are liminal beings of both water and land, they contribute to the liminality of the setting, as Dionysus passes through this almost neutral zone, that is somehow both, and yet also neither, living or dead. However, there is an inconsistency within the text, as although Dionysus must cross the liminal threshold to reach the underworld, his comedic companion must walk around the lake to reach the destination. This could disrupt the entire understanding of the underworld within this play, as Xerneas bypasses the threshold and still enters, suggesting that perhaps it is merely the location on the map. However, it, it must also be taken into account that this play is still a comedy, so certain elements, such as the humour of Xerneas having to walk around the lake while Dionysus was carried across in a boat, doesn't necessarily jeopardise the liminality of the underworld, as such actions are intentionally ridiculous and not to be taken seriously. Therefore, we can understand that the underworld wasn't always necessarily imagined to be explicitly underground, but more so distant and across a boundary, so that although it is connected to this world, it is not entirely of this world. Besides explicitly describing the location of the underworld, many of these texts also carry the concept of ritual to enter and find the underworld. This is due to the fact that, through ritual, individuals may achieve the liminality necessary to breach the gap between us and the underworld. This can be seen in works such as within the Homeric Hymn to Demeter, it is this hymn which codifies the rituals and traditions of the Eleusinian mysteries, which were believed to grant the performer immortality and a joyous afterlife. One aspect of said ritual was the journey Demeter made while looking for Persephone, which is reenacted in the sacred way from Athens to Eleusis. This concept of traversing a long journey, as reenacted in the mysteries, influenced the Greek conception of death, with many seeing the soul as having to travel a long journey, like with the sacred way to reach their destination in the underworld. The mysteries provided guidance to help the soul reach the paradise they seek. It was a common aspect in the Greek conception of getting to the underworld, with Odysseus needing guidance by Circe in the Odyssey, and Dionysus needing advice from Heracles and Aristophanes' frogs. The concept of ritual and a need for guidance on a long journey through a liminal setting thus helps us imagine the location of the underworld as not only being distant, but as also being otherworldly, needing external forces and sacred rituals to find it, thus showing how the Greeks did not simply see it as a location on a map, but perhaps as a world that doesn't quite exist in our own, sitting beyond a liminal threshold, which is reinforced by the repeated water imagery. A threshold which is both liminal and neutral. The location and nature of the underworld was, however, not just explored in mythological stories, it was also explored in philosophical literary works, such as in Plato's The Myth of Earth. In this extract, Plato tells of a man who returned to life a few days after his death with knowledge of the structure of the underworld and the universe. What's interesting about this account is its uniqueness with it being one of very few texts to portray two different and separate underworlds. Within it, good souls rise up to enjoy reward for their good deeds, and wicked souls descend down to receive their punishment. This is more similar to Christian concepts of the afterlife, and stands out within the Greek literary canon as being particularly peculiar. However, some elements of the traditional idea of the underworld still remain, with the punishment being dark and pleasant and deep down within the earth. The main difference lies within this additional concept of an alternate path for good souls that sees them rising up into heaven, a place traditionally believed to be only for the gods and not humans. Additionally, this account also mirrors frogs and the Odyssey, with the souls, having been rewarded or punished, returning to the same level as the earth and proceeding across to the centre of the universe to be reborn. Here, the underworld is seen as having three levels, reaching both the bottom of the universe and the top, thus making it not some separate and distant chasm that souls travel to, but the central point of the universe and cosmic order, Although likely being somewhat influential on Greek imagination, due to its irregularity when compared to other portrayals within other Greek texts, it is most likely that this system is a bit of an anomaly, and is somewhat unique to Platonic philosophical understanding. It does, however, also raise the question that although there may have been commonalities and patterns within the depiction of the underworld and literature, this may not match up with the genuine religious or philosophical beliefs of where the underworld was within their actual conception of the universe. The location of the underworld within the Greek imagination does not have a clear answer. Across the many centuries that the Greek religion was practiced, ideas of such a place changed and developed. Greek literature provides some insight, with it being safe to say that it was generally conceived as being not of this world, with some form of distance or journey or threshold to keep us and the dead separate. Additionally, it was generally believed to be at least partially below within the earth. However, as with most of Greek religion, standard practice and beliefs about its true location and nature don't really exist. Instead, the varying accounts and beliefs about its location and nature are best looked at all together, with all elements capturing some part of the Greek imagination and all lending to the deeply mysterious nature of the underworld.